Okay, and we're rolling. Today is February 5th, 2023. We're in Lake City, Florida today. It's a Sunday, the week before the Super Bowl. We're not here covering uh, any movie locations or any Disney content. You read the title of the video, I'm sure you already know what I'm here for. It's a tragic event. It took place just outside this school on February 9th of 1978. It's only a few days away from the anniversary. It'll be 45 years in just a couple days of what happened here. At the time, it was called the Lake City Junior High School. I'm gonna turn my camera around and show some of the locations of where things took place. So this is the school that back in 1978 was the Lake City Middle School, Lake City Junior High School. On February 9th of 1978, that day was a cold, rainy day. I've done a lot of research on Ted Bundy and this particular case. It was the last, the last person, the last victim of Ted Bundy's was right here. A young lady by the name of Kimberly Diane Leach. She was 12 years old at the time. She went to school here. She was a seventh grader. Her brother was an eighth grader. And on that morning, the mom dropped them off across the street. We know there was a crossing guard that stood right over here on this side. His name was Clench Edinfield. Edinfield. Kim and her brother crossed the street. I'm going to need help from Michael reminding me of the names. And somewhere after she crossed the street, she met with her childhood friend. Do you remember her name? Lisa Little? No, there was another friend that she met that they went to the auditorium. Oh, Elaine Hendricks. Elaine Hendricks. That morning, Kim and her brother crossed the street. Kim met with her friend Elaine Hendricks. And to get out of the rain, they went into the auditorium, which is just back here in the middle of the of the school uh, grounds here. There's another building just on the other side. This building just back here was the auditorium. From what I've read, the Valentine's Day uh, ball dance was coming up. It was only about a week away. And Kim had been voted into the, into the Queen's Court. So on this day, from what we've read, and, and her friends are still alive today and still tell the stories all these years later, Kim and her friend bought donuts. Don't know if they bought them nearby at a shop if the school sold donuts and they went into the auditorium waiting for to get to their homeroom class okay so this building here is the auditorium this is where Kim and her friend Elaine came in Hendricks. I'm sorry Elaine Hendricks. Elaine Hendricks yeah Kim and her friend Elaine Hendricks came here uh, they got donuts and they hung out and waited for homeroom when the day officially started, I could probably keep the camera rolling, and the bell rang to go to home room. Kimberly Leach's home room is in this building right in the corner. And I actually have a picture that was taken. It's like a helicopter view from just behind these houses that shows it was a day after the disappearance that shows these buildings and it shows the route that the girls took. That's why. I, I'm certain of, of some of these uh, facts. We know that Kim's homeroom class was over here, right where that two is on the side of the building. Now I can't say which route she took. We'd assume she would just come out of the auditorium. We know there was a door here that the little girl says they went into, but she could have come out of another door on this side, maybe this side of the building. But we know that Kim went to her homeroom class Mike was going to tell me the homeroom teacher's name. John Bishop. John Bishop. What's her homeroom class? Right here in the corner of this building. It was here that day that Kim bought her, her ticket for the Valentine's Ball. That she was a member of the court. There's, you could go online and read all the details. There's a lot of friends from that day that talk about what they talked about. They talked about the boys they were going to dance with and things I guess, you know, teenage girls talk about. But her homeroom class was here, Mr. Bishop. The bell rang for her to go to first period. 
And from everything we've read, she collected books and her ticket, whatever it was, she comes out and she went to her first period class, which happened to be in the auditorium. The reason why it was in the auditorium, Kim had PE first period and it was a rainy day and nowhere have I read where they normally would have done PE. Maybe it would have been out here in this open lot. There's more grounds to the school over there, but we do know for sure is that PE that day was right here where we started a little while ago inside the auditorium. Here's where just fake crazy things happen that caused what happened that day. Okay, so I'm outside the auditorium where Kim would have went to her first period class. Her first period class was PE, which we said earlier would have been somewhere out here. I'm not sure where PE would have been, but because it was a rainy day, the PE was held inside the auditorium. Shortly after first period started, her homeroom teacher, no, his ho her homeroom teacher, John Bishop, where we just showed where she left, she just went from homeroom to first period. When Kim packed up all her belongings, she left her pocketbook behind. So the homeroom teacher sent another student that he had in his first period class, Tandy Bonner, T-A-N-D-Y Bonner, with a note for the PE teacher Juanita Caldwell, which was Kim Leach's first period teacher. He sent a note with the student saying, hey, have Kim come back to homeroom to collect her pocketbook. So I might say, why didn't the girl bring it? Maybe they didn't want to go through Kim's personal things. So the little girl came over, got Kim Leach to come with her. And this we know for a fact. I'm going to turn my camera around. We know from the student, Tandy Bonner, that they came out here and walked across back to this corner where Kim's homeroom teacher her homeroom class was to get her pocketbook and that's the last anyone saw of her we know she got her purse but never made it back she never arrived back to her first period class now going back and interviewing everyone after after everything that happened that day the student tandy bonner claims that when she walked across the courtyard to come get kim she saw a man in all the descriptions uh 30s thin the height, weight, everything matched. She just said across the street. Now, was it across the street on this side of the school or was it across the street on this side of the school? We know things that happened over there and we'll get to that in just a moment. But she claims that she came over here, got Kim. They walked back together. Kim got her purse and she never made it back. Her friend from earlier in the day, they had, uh, they went and got donuts with her, hung out at the auditorium, knew that she would see her for second period. Uh, they had a class together. Well, Kim didn't show up that, that day to class. So they left her responsible. Lisa Little, I believe, was her friend's name. And still to this day, if you look up Lisa Little, you'll see all. Oh, she still gets interviews. She still get interviewed. There's a sheriff's car coming up behind me, probably wondering what I'm doing. Um, Lisa Little still gets interviewed about what happened that day and talks about the, all, the, all the events of that day. So Lisa kept hold of Kim's books for the day. And it wasn't until they got to about six period class that all the teachers realized, hey, she's not here. Maybe she skipped for the day. So they called home to Kim Leach's mom, Frida, who is or was at the time a uh, hairdresser. She cut hair, hair salon. She had her own hair salon. And on that particular day, she had a headache and didn't go to work and went home to take a nap. She received a call. I could look up the exact times, but I want to say it was like in the two o'clock-ish area as she was waking up saying, hey, Kim hasn't been to any of her classes. You know, did she skip school? And the mom, as far as she knew, nope, nothing happened. She drove down here. They walked around the grounds. It was just the start of a horrific event. No one found her. It wasn't until five, six o'clock in the evening that she didn't make it home. She assumed just hoped for the best that she'll make it home. That didn't happen. So then that's when the investigation started. I'm gonna stop my camera for a second and get back to the front of the street where witnesses saw certain things that day. Okay, so I walk back to the corner where the rest of the story unfolds. I re realized I just said something wrong a moment ago. It was Hendrix. Was it Lisa Hendrix? Oh. Elaine Hendrix was the friend that Kim met, went and got donuts, and went to the auditorium. 
Lisa Little was her friend that she went to homeroom with to buy tickets for the dance and said that she would meet her up later in the day. I didn't want to confuse the two. Elaine Hendricks was the friend she met in the morning. Lisa Little was the friend she went to homeroom to buy the, the tickets for the dance. So once word got out that this young lady was missing and it was all over the news, people that day started calling in saying, hey, well, I noticed this, I noticed that. Well, car, there was a woman, I could, I don't know if I know her name, but we said that one, but there was a white van that was parked on the other side of the street. Let's get our bearings here. Here's the school, auditorium, Kim's homeroom classes around the corner. Somewhere between her getting her pocketbook and coming back here, she must have been intercepted, we don't know. But what we do know is it was a white van parked just here. I have a map that shows it. A white van, he was actually parked in a lane of traffic, which is insane how many things had to happen for him to get away with this. When you think about it, Bundy had already been arrested for his crimes in uh, Washington, Colorado, Utah. Uh, he escaped twice. He should have never, should have never gotten to this. Uh, Ted Bundy was already arrested in a courthouse, waiting for his attorney. They put him in a in a room up on the third floor to wait for his attorney. He wasn't handcuffed or anything. He was able to get out a window, jump down three stories, and made a run for it. He was free for a few weeks. Got arrested, sent to sent to a prison in Colorado. He went weeks without eating, lost a lot of weight, and was able to sneak out of an air vent and got escaped a second time from Colorado. That's when he made the trek down here to Florida State. That'll be a video for another time. When he went to Tallahassee, the Kyle Omega sorority house, he killed two girls there. It was two weeks, just over two weeks after the Tallahassee murders that this happened here. Um, so getting back to the story, when they knew that the young girl went missing from the school, there was one woman that was driving in traffic. It says there was a white van that was just stopped in the middle of the lane on the far side and a man walked across the street. A separate story, which Michael gave me the name, there was a EMT fireman that was just getting off of like a two day shift at the firehouse. His name was? Lieutenant Andy Anderson. Lieutenant Andy Anderson. He was coming up this way and was stuck in traffic right here when he saw what he describes a man walking across the courtyard with a little girl that appeared in tears or upset and the way that he described it he thought maybe the little girl got in trouble in school and it was the dad coming to pick her up of course like they say if he'd have known then but those are two witnesses that saw a white van a man described if you go by weight height hair color to ted bundy get get back to the white van and drive off uh with the little girl uh, Bundy was arrested, it was a few weeks after this, but they didn't know that he had anything to do with this yet. He got arrested for everything else that he had, that he had on him uh, from escaping and they knew or they, had, they, had, they were pretty certain that the Kyle Omega house in Tallahassee, the Florida State murders, were Ted Bundy. It wasn't about two months, more or less, give or take, it was two months after Kim Leach went missing that sadly her body was found. It was in the Sewanee uh, River State Park. It's a little bit of a hike from here. I've had, I guess, maybe a little less than an hour drive. I'm not going to go there. There's nothing really to show there. It's a huge state park. When we leave here, we're going to stop by Kim's gravesite. But uh, I've had people before on my videos. We just got back from Colorado a few months ago, and we went to the Watts house where Chris Watts killed his wife and two little girls. We went to the John Bonet house. I've had people comment on my video saying it's disrespectful what I do, that I shouldn't be going to these places. Um, when we got to John Bonet's house, the owner of the house really didn't want us there. Even though I was on city right away, I was across the street. It wasn't anywhere near their private property. But I say it all the time. Uh, this building, it's crazy to think it's been almost 50 years and it still looks the exact same. Like I said earlier, I have pictures of what this school looked like back in 1978 and absolutely nothing has changed. It looks the exact same. Other than it changed the name, I don't think this is a junior high school. It was an elementary school at one time, I wanna say, but it looks like maybe it's an adult learning center now. But uh, no, I mean no disrespect. I'm, I'm just fascinated with some of these stories. I tell Michael all the time, I uh, document it for posterity. Maybe the day will come where this school gets knocked down and it won't be here. Um, 
when I just come by to capture it. It's, it's bad history, but it's history. I don't think that'll cover it from here. We're gonna go stop by Kim Leach's grave site, which is just about a mile from here. I also have two addresses that I found. Her, her daddy, uh, Kim Leach's dad, passed away shortly after Bundy's execution. I wanna say Bundy was executed in 89, and he was convicted in 80, so it was about nine years. So he finally, you know, was put to death. Uh, the dad, they'd say, was like a heart. He got his mind off it by working. The guy was working, working, working nonstop, and he passed away young. Sadly, Kim's brother has also passed away since then. We were at her gravesite. We were here a few years ago. We documented all this, but for pictures for Instagram. I just recently started uh, trying to figure out YouTube, so I thought I'd come out and make a YouTube video. But her brother has since passed away, and for what I've seen in the last two weeks, her mom is still alive. I have two addresses for uh, the mom. Her name is Frida Leach. One is the house she currently lives at, and one is the home where they all live together. Well, the last day that Kim left home to come to school that day. That, that probably is too much. I don't need to go by there and show the house, but that's all public, public record. You could, you could see all that, but the mom's still alive. We've been to the graveyard. We'll go over there. It's the, where Kim's buried. Her dad's there, her brother. All right, so we made it to the cemetery. It is just about a mile from the school. It's a pretty small town. The cemetery here is called the uh, Lake City Memorial. I'm gonna turn my camera around. It's the main road right there. And here was the gate to come into the cemetery. Just make an immediate right as soon as you come in. Kim's final resting place is right back here. She's with family now. Her brother's right next to her. Her dad is right here to the front. Mom will be right next to dad. 